What's up everybody, TCM here back with another video. And today we're gonna to be talking about how you can hack remotely from anywhere. Now that sounds like a clickbaity title and it kind of is, but I'm gonna show you how you could set up a hacking box or a pen test box or a drop box, whatever you wanna call it, and how you can access that from anywhere in the world. Now we've done this before with Azure, using Azure in the cloud to set up a VPN. I'm gonna show you a lot easier way. We'll also talk about my pen test drop boxes, what I use, the specs on those, uh, cause I get asked that by you all quite a bit. And we'll go into the setup, which is fairly easy, fairly straightforward and 100% free. So let's go ahead and do that. Before we do, of course, if you like the channel, hit the like button, subscribe, comment down below, you know the drill by now. So let's go ahead and jump right into the video. All right, so we've got some assessments coming up at work and we need to send multiple laptops to multiple locations. And to do these engagements, I went ahead and just bought some more laptops. I have been using lately the Dell G3 series. Uh, they're fairly nice. I'll post a link to them um, down in the description below, but they're i7s, they're 16 gigs of RAM. I think this one has maybe 500 or so uh, gigabytes of hard drive space, SSD. Uh, fairly quick. I'll show you the setup once we get RDP'd in. But my goal is I want to send this laptop to a client. I want them to plug in. And when they plug in, I just want it to work. I want to be able to access that machine from my location. So we call these drop boxes. Um, this is what we would use during an assessment. You could think of this maliciously as if we were going to uh, hide a little box. You might not have this. You might have like a little Raspberry Pi or something much smaller. Uh, but the same concept here, if we plug in a machine in a network and we leave it, uh, this is for an assessment, but you could also have it for a malicious rogue device as well. Uh, so this whole conversation and what I've done before, um, I used to actually use this uh, with Azure. I have a video out there I, I talked about in the beginning, but I used to use Azure to access my machines and it's okay, OpenVPN, connection was okay, kind of slow. Uh, and then I was talking to the mayor, Joe Helly, and he told me, well, we're starting to use zero tier. Have you heard of zero tier? Haven't heard of zero tier, I'm out of the loop. Uh, so I went to go try it out and it is awesome. It's free, it works, it's seamless, it's incredible. So let me just go ahead and show you what this is. I'm gonna go ahead and switch screens. All right, so this is zero tier. I'll put a link in the description down below, zerotier.com. What is it? Well, all you have to do is follow these beautiful steps here. You create a uh, zero tier account. You get a 16 digit network ID. You download zero tier onto any of the devices that you want to connect to. And then you have your access panel, which I'll show you those here shortly. So what you can do is you just follow the documentation. Super easy. If you come to download, you see there's an MSI installer. There's a Mac installer, Apple, Android, Linux. Um, even NAS devices, which is super nice. Uh, so you can use this to access pretty much anything that you want. Um, very, very straightforward, okay? So you get signed up. If you wanna follow along with this, you just get signed up. Uh, you go ahead and sign up, and then you can go ahead and download the device that you need. Now you need this on two devices at a minimum. So I've got this already set up on my machine here at home, and then I've also got it set up on the laptop. Now I put the laptop on a different network just to try this out. And I've got it attached to my cell phone right now, but you'll see how easy this is to connect. So let's play a scenario here. You've gone ahead, you set up an account, you've downloaded these. You wanna see what this looks like, right? Okay, so here what you see is my name here. The only thing I'm not showing is the network ID, uh, just so you guys don't try to join it. Even though my access control is private, I don't wanna to have to deal with rejecting a bunch of you. So uh, you can see here we have hacking net, that's the, the network. You can come in here and choose the route that you want to use. Um, so I just went ahead and did an easy auto assign route. I just picked a 192.168.193 network, fairly straightforward. Um, and then you get auto assigned your IP address. So you'll see if I come down here, scroll down, I put two machines up. I've got my uh, machine here, the uh, desktop computer, which is what I'm accessing from. You can see the IP address there. And then you can see the IP address here of the laptop. So what I've done is I've just downloaded this software, put it on both, and then authorized it here. Uh, the only other thing is that you have check marks, which I can bring that over real quick. But when you when you go in here and you join a node, you just come in here and it, you have these check marks. I went ahead and allowed everything. So I've got the global IP, the allowed managed IP, et cetera. All this stuff I'm just allowing or permitting. This allowed me to be able to successfully connect to the device itself. 
Okay, enough of the boring stuff. Here is the machine I'm already peed into. So as you can see, I'm here. This is my pen test Dropbox. This is actually what I will send to a client. Okay, so I'm on a wireless network. Again, this is a pretend network that I'm hosting off my cell phone. But you can see here, if we go to the hidden icon, zero tier is running. Um, that's the only setting that you need. You just really need to download zero tier, install on both machines, and you're good to go outside of those checkboxes. And when you connect, this will be brought up on the screen. You know how it comes up and then Windows will say, hey, is this a private network, public network, etc." Make sure you check private and allow it through the firewall. That's the only thing that you need to do. And it works beautifully. I'm already peed in without any issues whatsoever. Okay, and with that out of the way, let's take a look at what's on the Dropbox. I don't want to make this a long video, so we're going to go through it quickly. All I've done is really I go out to Night Night, I install a few basic things. I go, I get Google Chrome, I get Notepad, plus plus, and I get Putty because you might need it. Other than that, I go, I download VMware Workstation Player. I just player, don't even need Pro for this, just Pro in the home setup. Okay, fairly, fairly straightforward. The only thing that I have on here that is a paid service would be Nessus. I download Nessus, I install that because I'll use that for doing any sort of vulnerability scanning. Now, if you want to see my Dropbox, again, this is fairly straightforward. As of right now, I'm shipping, I'm not shipping it yet. I just got the default credentials in for root tour. Uh, the first thing I do when I come in here is actually now run a tool called Pimp My Cali. I'll put a file description uh, down below or a link to the GitHub. But all you have to do is you go to a, a web browser here and you just literally go to, uh, here it is actually, Pimp My Cali, because it's the only thing I went to in this. It is a shell script that fixes a lot of the broken issues that happen with the new updated Kali's, uh, including Metasploit 6 and a lot of the other features that are out there. So this is regularly updated. You can see four days ago, and it is fantastic. DeWalt has put together a great script, deserves more than 73 stars, if you ask me. It is my go-to, just default, get everything fixed, installation, and I like having root on the machine. Whether or not that's a good security practice is your own debate, uh, but I like running off of root without having to use sudo. A lot of tools break when you run sudo versus just running default as root. So I've got a small little preference configurations I got to make in here, making the font size bigger, stuff like that. Otherwise, my pen test box, when I first install it and I ship it to a client, is exactly what you see. It's clean. It's encrypted. Okay, I do use Windows Pro. I do use BitLocker on these, make them encrypted. Otherwise, this is a easy, what we're maybe five, 10 minutes in the video. This is easy, right? You literally download a client, you connect to it, and there you go. No Azure setups, no Azure credits, no cost, and uh, outside of having the Dropbox itself, but you could put this on a Raspberry Pi. What's stopping you from putting this on a Raspberry Pi? Nothing. Use your imagination, use your creativity. It's an amazing, amazing thing. So that's all I got for you today. I just wanted to show you how you could take a simple tool such as Zero Tier install it and if you're following along you could see that this process only takes a few minutes and have remote access to a machine anywhere now i made this hacker fight i made it more fit the channel but this is great for any sort of remote activity if you need to remote into a machine or if you need to remote into a nas even a cell phone there's all kinds of awesome things that you can do with this 100 percent free uh, so I encourage you to go check out Zero Tier. There's no sponsorship. There's no affiliate link down in the description. I just believe in this tool that much that I think it's completely worth it. So that's it for this video. Until next time, my name is The Cyber Mentor, and I do thank you for joining me. Peace out.